basically wanted to figure out exactly why we were getting um, illnesses and reports of illnesses from our um, Baker Lake. So kind of our purpose of our project was to characterize the microbial diversity and determine the pro um, or the predominant microbial um, organisms in our Baker Lake while inve investigating reports of human infection. So our kind of overview of it, exactly kind of what we did, our sophomore class helped us with um, kind of sampling all around our lake and there was 20 different samples that were made. So then not knowing exactly what was on our plates, we went into further investigation. So we um, purchased some special coliscan plates called Easy Gel Coliscan plates that identify E. coli or coliforms. And then following with that, here are a couple of our pictures of our coliform scan plates. Following with that, we did some, uh, performed some Sanger sequencing with metagenomics to help us investigate the organisms in the lake. Following with that, we also partnered by asking the DEQ if they would help us by finding out exactly what pathogens were in our Baker Lake and help us um, provide guidance to our county. So our first part was our sampling, like I said. So our normal state regulations for colonies per mill of water is only 126. And we are exceeding that level by a high amount. We're 1,000 to 100,000 plus colonies per mill of water. So then following with that, that's when we did our E. coli and coliform testing. So here we have a couple of our pictures. So dark blue and purple was our E. coli. And then also following that, we had our other coliforms, which were pink and red. And then teal and green showed salmonella, but that was the only thing that we didn't see on our plates. So here, this was before our Baker Lake actually was flushed. So we had over 12,000 other coliforms that were in the lake that was harmful to humans. And then following with that, after we had drained the upper lake, it dropped numerous amount of numbers. It was only four. And then following with that, that's when we did our 16R ribosome testing and also with our metagenomics. So our first, third part was isolating the 16S ribosome. So which down here on this picture, we actually, those were our three ribosomes that we sent off to figure out exactly what was going on. And after that, Dr. Marissa Padula actually helped us with blasting those sites with our sequences that we received. So our two top um, bacteria that was found was cutium bacterium, which is actually an acne. Everybody has that on the surface of their skin. It's in their pores. And then following with that, flavobacterium, which is susceptible to walleye. And over here, we did our alumina sequencing testing, and this was with metagenomics. So our biggest one was Candidus uh, planktophilia. And then following with that for our pathogens was our um, flavobacterium, which showed to have the highest rate. And then here down on our uh, potential uh, flava would be our proteum bacteria. So overall, with this, with our DEQ, so down here in our plates actually, I have in my binder. So this was actually the um, testing piece that we used, mm -hmm. so our charts. So over here, if you look, this picture right here is showing um, coliforms. So coliforms only turn yellow in these. And if they blow in the black light just like this, that means they're a sort of E. coli. So here for our chart, we have our coliform. So it did exceed 15, but it did exceed 10. And then for our E. coli, it didn't exceed five, but it did exceed zero. So our overall project, so basically on everything, so we identified what was in the lake. We had over 124 different types of bacteria that was actually found in our Baker Lake. And with following with that, we are also gonna continue monitoring with DEQ until August.